we live in a republic, not a democracy. I got so many of these comments after I posted up a clip of a recent video to Instagram and TikTok. I figured it was worth diving into. I'm Stephanie. Welcome to Teaching Liberty, where I teach you what you should have learned in social studies class. We're definitely going to need the American flag glasses for this one, as well as a couple of books off my bookshelf. So I'm going to grab those while you grab a paper and pen and get ready to take some notes. So I've got my constitution here. I've got a copy of the Federalist Papers. And I have Democracy in America by Alexis de Tocqueville. And I've consulted a number of other internet resources, all of which are in the description down below. I believe that providing sources is important for transparency sake, as well as so that you can dive in and do your own research. And I actually created a guided note sheet to go along with this video, which you can download for free at teachingliberty.org or I put a link to it in the description down below. Now, there are a lot of videos on this topic, but most of them go something like this. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. A republic, not democracy. Apparently, if it's in the Pledge of Allegiance, written by devout socialist Francis Bellamy, it must be true. Like so much of what we see in modern politics, this quip that it's a republic, not a democracy, is used simply to generate an emotional response rather than any meaningful conversation. Obviously, there's a lot of criticisms of Trump that he is bad for democracy, that he's bad for American democracy. Okay. We so are we're, a republic. We're a republic. We are we're not a, a democracy. We're a republic, but we're not a democracy. One thing we've been hearing at Trump rallies like this over the past few months is that America isn't really a democracy. America's not a democracy, it's a republic. It's not a democracy. Okay, democracy is actually not as good as you think it is. Is America a democracy? America is a democracy. It was founded as a democracy. I've heard a lot of conspiracy theories. I hear a lot of things <laughs> out on the road. But to hear Americans, people who would describe themselves as patriots, say that America is not a democracy, that stopped me in my tracks. You are hearing people say America is not a democracy because there are people around Trump who want them to be saying that. This segment is clearly designed to get Team Blue to think Team Red is stupid and reinforce the biases of either side. Classic divide and conquer politics that continues to manufacture consent for the false left-right paradigm. So in this video, we're going to take a different tact. We're going to clearly define our terms. We're going to bring in the full historical context. I know, these are some crazy ideas. And I get they probably won't evoke the same emotional response as Glenn Beck had to that CNN clip. Your head will explode on this CNN uh, clip. So please wrap your head tightly in duct tape. But I know you like me, which is why you're here and which is why you definitely hit that like button and you're sharing this video out with all your friends, which in turn lets YouTube know to share this video with even more people and we can turn it into the viral sensation it should be while improving our political discourse and general knowledge of history. And for me personally, that gets my emotions emoting. Okay, so let's start with some basic definitions. Democracy comes from two Greek words, demos, meaning people, and krato, meaning rule. So democracy literally means people rule. Republic comes from the Latin word res publica. Res meaning thing, publica meaning public. So it literally means public thing or public matter. So we have democracy, meaning people rule, and republic, meaning public matter. And as you can see, when we boil each word down to their most basic meaning, they are very similar. And as such, can and often have throughout history been used interchangeably. Now, words can have more than one meaning, especially in a specific historical context. Unfortunately, comment section hot takes lack all of that specificity in historical context, so let's take the time to build it here. When a person says, we live in a republic, not a democracy, 
they're most likely invoking the difference between the Roman-style republic and the Athenian-style democracy. Athens was a single city-state in Greece, which between the 5th and 4th centuries BCE employed a direct democracy, a system and governance in which all free men, so in reality a very small segment of society, could vote on every law. In contrast, the Roman Republic, which lasted from approximately 509 to 27 BCE, was made up of many city-states and spread out across a vast region, relying upon representatives to vote on each law. So indeed, within this specific historical context, the United States Constitution sets up more of a Republican form of government than an Athenian-style direct democracy. Still, I would contend that the word democracy is not limited to the definition of a direct democracy. And if you do want to invoke the definition of a direct democracy, you must do as James Madison did in Federalist Paper Number 10 and define your terms. In a discussion on how to check the power of factions, be they a majority or minority faction, Madison writes that it may be concluded that a pure democracy, by which I mean a society consisting of a small number of citizens who assemble and administer the government in person, can admit of no cure for the mischiefs of faction. A common passion or interest will, in almost every case, be felt by a majority of the whole, a communication and concert of results from the form of government itself. And there is nothing to check the inducements to sacrifice the weaker party or an obnoxious individual. Hence, it is that such democracies have ever been spectacles of turbulence and contention. Notice that Hamilton wrote such democracies, meaning that a direct democracy is one form of democratic rule. Interestingly, it should be noted that later on in Federalist Paper Number 63, Madison writes, in the most pure democracies of Greece, many of the executive functions were performed not by the people themselves, but by officers elected by the people and representing the people in their executive capacity. So even in the so-called pure or direct democracy of Greece, there were elements of representation. And just as the word democracy has no singular definition throughout time, neither does the word republic. There are countless examples of governments invoking the word republic where little to no elements of representation existed. Madison discusses this in Federalist Paper number 39, where he writes, Holland, in which no particle of the supreme authority is derived from the people, has passed almost universally under the de denomination of republic. The same title has been bestowed on Venice, where absolute power over the great body of the people is exercised in the most absolute manner by a small body of hereditary nobles. Poland, which is a mixture of aristocracy and of monarchy in their worst forms, has been dignified with the same appellation. So as Madison points out, we must specifically define our terms. And that he does in the next paragraph. He writes, we may define a republic to be, or at least may bestow that name on, a government which derives all its powers directly or indirectly from the great body of the people and is administered by persons holding their offices during pleasure for a limited period or during good behavior. It is essential to such a government that it be derived from the great body of the society, not from an inconsiderable proportion or a favored class of it. Interestingly, Madison's definition of republic is nearly identical to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary's definition of democracy, government by the people. Now, it does say, especially, rule of the majority. But if you then look to definition 1b, it says a government in which the supreme power is vested in the people and exercised by them directly or indirectly through a system of representation, usually involving periodically held free elections. In other words, the use of the terms republic and democracy are not quite as clear-cut as the 
it's a republic, not a democracy, folks would like to make it seem. And it never was. As explained by C.H. Bretherton in his essay, Too Much Democracy, democracy is a relative term, like whiskey. You remember that the Scotchman said that some whiskey was better than others, but there was no bad whiskey. Some forms of government are more democratic than others. An oligarchy is more democratic than an autocracy. A constitutional system involving adult suffrage is more democratic than one with property qualifications. And one which includes referendum and initiative is more democratic than one which has neither. So when we use the word democracy, as in the title of this article, we simply mean a constitutional system in which a relatively large number of people have a finger in the governmental pie. Now, I don't agree with all of Brotherton's analysis and certainly not with his conclusions in that essay, but I do believe this description of democracy is very useful. Are we having fun yet? I'm having fun. So let's keep going down this road to deepen our understanding of the term democracy and how it's been used throughout history. Because as language does, it has evolved and transformed over time. In fact, it's only been relatively recently that the term democracy has come into common use. Though it is true, the word democracy is as old as Aristotle. Its use throughout time has been mostly limited to the writings of political scientists as a tool of analysis. According to R.R. Palmer in Notes on the Use of the Word Democracy, 17. 89 to 1799, the two nouns, Democrat and Aristocrat, did not exist until the very last years of the old regime. No Democrats fought in the American Revolution, and the age of aristocracy, as long as it was unchallenged, heard nothing of aristocrats. Neither word was used in English before 1789. In France, aristocrat crops up in the reign of Louis the Sixteenth. Democrat not until 1789. So during this time, the word democracy did not mean direct democracy or really any specific form of government, but rather they were used in opposition to aristocrat or aristocracy. Palmer continues on writing, it is often said, at least in America, that democracy and democrat, as far as they had any currency at all, were foisted by the conservatives upon sympathizers with the revolution, that they were terms of abuse or reproach, smear words used to discredit people who would not use them of themselves. In other words, the term democracy or democrat were used by people against the revolution to describe supporters of the revolution. And if that's what a democrat is, you can count me in. And another example of the term democracy being used in this more general sense, we have the Dutch Van Hagendorp writing in 1791. It is a dispute between an old and a new system, between the idea that some people have a right to govern and the idea of sovereignty of the people or democracy. Now, in the American context, the it's a republic, not a democracy folks like to point out the fact that nowhere in the United States Constitution does it contain the word democracy, while in Article 4, Section 4, known as the Guarantee Clause, it does guarantee each state a Republican form of government. However, I don't believe this is sufficient evidence to support the claim that this is a republic not a democracy, because when we widen out the conversation to include the debates of the Constitutional Convention, so the conversations which inform the writing of the Constitution, we can see our founders using both terms and begin to more clearly understand the interplay between them. Before we get into some quotes from those debates, let's remind ourselves of the historical context. The reason the Constitutional Convention was called due to issues that had arisen with the Articles of Confederation, the governing document under which the United States had been ruled since 1781. While the framers feared an excess of centralized power, the Articles had left them unable to do much of anything at all. 
So in May of 1787, delegates from each of the states gathered in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania to devise a path forward and ultimately created the Constitution as we know it today. And from these debates, we can gather a deeper understanding of the terms democracy and republic and their relations to one another. On May 31st, debating the composition of the national legislature, Elbridge Gerry worried about the excesses of democracy. At the same time, he warned of things being too Republican, or in other words, too many decisions being made by representatives and not enough directly by the people. In that same debate, George Mason argued strongly for an election of the larger branch by the people. It was to be the grand depository of the democratic principle of the government. It was, so to speak, to be our House of Commons. It ought to know and sympathize with every part of the community and ought therefore to be taken not only from the different parts of the whole republic, but also from the different districts of the larger members of it, which had in several instances, particularly in Virginia, different interests and views arising from difference of produce, of habits. He had admitted that we had been too democratic, but was afraid we incautiously run into the opposite extreme. We ought to attend to the rights of every class of the people. You can see from these quotes that the question wasn't whether the United States was or was not a democracy. It was about how much democracy and how to balance democratic elements with more Republican or representative elements. On June 6, the delegates turned to the issue of representation in the First House, and in these discussions, we can further see the interplay between the word democracy or democratic and republic. In this debate, Mason said, much had been alleged against democratic elections. He admitted that much might be said, but it was to be considered that no government was free from imperfections and evils, and that improper elections in many instances were inseparable from Republican governments. Again, this phrasing seems to suggest that a Republican government is a form of democracy and has democratic elements within it. Later in that same discussion, Madison asked, was it to be supposed that Republican liberty could long exist under the abuses of it practiced in some of the states? A few sentences later, he answered this question saying that we must enlarge the sphere of government, that this was the only defense against the inconveniences of democracy consistent with the democratic form of government. As we can see from these quotes, the founders clearly thought of themselves as establishing a democratic form of government or a democracy. The question was how to protect that democracy from the worst tendencies of democracy in its more pure forms. And to do that, they were asking, how and where can we use republicanism or indirect rule through representation? We can see a similar interplay of the words democracy and republic in Alexis de Tocqueville's Democracy in America. In Volume 1, Part 2, Chapter 5, in the section of What Efforts Democracy is Capable, Tocqueville writes, If a democratic country remains subject to a republican government for a century, one can believe that at the end of the century it would be wealthier, more populous, and more prosperous than the neighboring despotic states. So again, we can see that republicanism is a specific form of democratic government, and throughout Tocqueville's book, we can decipher specific meanings to the word republic and to democracy. However, there are times when he uses the words interchangeably. He may say democratic republic or representative democracy or simply democracy or republic. And in a similar fashion, we can see leaders and regular people alike use these words more or less synonymously. So while some people might prefer the specificity of republic over democracy, it is not incorrect to call the United States a democracy. And unless you are going to go through and precisely define your terms and evoke a particular historical context, claiming it's a republic, not a democracy, communicates essentially 
zero information. Now, this isn't to dissuade you from arguing against the excesses of majoritarian rule, but if that's the argument you want to make, then make it. Don't simply quip, it's a republic, not a democracy. Perhaps the debate over what term to use, republic, democracy, constitutional republic, representative democracy, is a distraction from the more important question. Is the United States any of those things? 